hey everyone and welcome back to my channel today if you are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for the latest updates when it comes to canadian immigration staff especially those who are interested in moving to canada to come and study today i'll be diving into one topic that many of you have been asking about over the last couple of days i've had people reaching out to me to ask me about possibly coming into canada with a visitor visa and how they can transition from there possibly to a work permit so today's video will be about converting a visitor visa to a work permit in canada as much as i like to advise people not to use this route i've seen people who are adamant and still want to do it so i felt it would be best to at least share some ideas on how to go about it so whether you are already in canada on a visitor visa or you are planning to come soon on a visitor visa this video will be something for you so stay tuned did you know that there's a temporal public policy in effect until february 28 2025 that is allowing visitors in canada to apply for work permits stick around and i will walk you through everything that you need to know from the requirements to the step-by-step -step instruction on how you can go about the process of possibly coming in with a visitor visa and maybe transition from that one to a work permit and i also try and share some pro tips on what you can do to make this journey much smoother generally visitors are not allowed to apply for work permits from within canada however due to a special policy in effect visitors can now apply for work permits without having to leave the country previously if you come in with a visitor visa and you want to transition from that one to a work permit you will be advised to leave the country so that you can apply for work permit but with the new change you are able to do that even inside the country this policy is a game changer for everyone who wishes to work and live in canada but might not want to go the steady route because they believe either they are too qualified enough to get a job offer or might not have the hair to maybe go back to school so as much as we like to advise people to either go the steady route because it might be easier for them to transition from there to work permits and possibly to permanent residency there are people who will tell you that i don't have the head i can't even go back to school right now and the others who will tell you that oh i know i'm too qualified to be able to get a job so i want to go that route that currently exists and see what is possible for me so if you fall into any of these categories then possibly this might be good news for you but with this new policy to qualify you will need a legitimate job offer from a canadian employer and in most cases a positive labor market impact assessment that's lmi there are also lmia exempt occupations such as caregivers where only a job offer is required so from my experience what most people would do in these cases they will go that route because if they get a caregiver job with that one they don't need to go through the lmia process where because that one is labor market impact assessment exempt so with that one all they will need is just the job so most people that i know who have gone this route this is where they use to get the, the job for themselves so that they are able to qualify when it comes to this policy others who might be able to get the lmia will go that route where they will get an employer who employed them and issue that lmia for them because they are prepared to go through that process for them so luckily you've managed to let's say land a job which is lmia exempt or you are one of those lucky few who was able to find an employer who is prepared to go through the lmia process with you and possibly get the document for you for you to qualify what are the next steps that you can go through so after getting that document your next step will be to focus on the application so what are the application requirements let's talk about the basic requirements you will need to meet to change your visitor visa to a work permit first like i said you will need a legitimate job offer from a canadian employer with a positive lmia secondly if you have lmi as a occupations then with that one only that job offer is needed you don't need to have a positive lmi then thirdly you will need to maintain your legal visitor status throughout the process which means that you will have to obey the rules that govern your visitor visa and for most cases for visitor visa you are allowed to stay up to six months 
or the number of months that the immigration officer gave you at the port of entry so in this case if you are going to stay for six months it will mean that you will need to go through the whole process within that six months period in order not to break the rules that govern your visa visa because the moment you go past that six months now you've broken the rules that govern your visa visa which means you are not a legal you don't have legal status in canada so whatever you are going to do you will need to be able to go through the whole process in that six months period maximum or the number of months that you were given meaning that even if they gave you 10 year visa and you come in you will be only you only have six months to be able to go through this whole process without having to break any rules and my advice is if that's not the case for you it wouldn't hurt to come in possibly start go back and try to come back again without having to break any rules so luckily you have the job you haven't broken any rules you are still have legal status in canada how do you go about the process now let's break it down step by step wise on how to convert your visa visa to a work permit step one get a job offer first you need a canadian employer willing to hire you that is key you can utilize recruitment firms job boards and even networking to help you land a job one platform that i've seen a lot of people use is job bank to search for jobs because sometimes you can upload your profile there and you can have some employers reaching out to you based on the qualification that you have especially if they've been trying to find somebody with your skill sets but have no money to find it. if you upload and they realize that maybe the position that they have matches your skill sets most times they will reach out to you and ask you to apply and also if you go on to job bank you can narrow down and see all the available positions that exist and see the ones that you qualify for so that you can apply and the good thing about that one is because with one profile you can apply to multiple jobs without having to now reconstruct your cv at every given time however i always tell people that ensure that the offer you get no matter who is giving it to you is thorough and outlines the conditions of your employment because that's going to be key in this process so whatever job that you are giving make sure that the conditions of employment are very thorough and it's actually laid out properly for you because you are going to need it at some point next you've landed that job the next step would be to obtain the lmia that will be obtained by your employer if required that's if you don't get an occupation that's lmi exempt your employer must obtain an LMI from the Employment and Social Development Canada. That's ESDC. ESDC is a federal department dedicated to improving the standard of living and quality of life for Canadians. They promote highly skilled and inclusive labor force and oversees the LMI process. This process demonstrates that there are no Canadian candidates available for that particular job. So which means that the employer is going to go through this process and justify to them that they couldn't find anybody in Canada for that particular job and that you are the only person who fits that job. That's why this is very important and most people fail at this stage because it's something that you will need an employer who is dedicated and actually need you to go through because the cost of that NMIA is about a thousand Canadian dollars which is not refundable so any employer going through that process should be prepared to at least foot that bill and they should be prepared to fill all the necessary documents to justify that they actually advertised the job and couldn't find anybody that's why like I said most people fail at this stage even though they might land the job they wouldn't find an employer who is prepared to at least go through the LMI process with them. Luckily, you've landed your job, you have an employer who is prepared to at least give, get you the LMI. The next step will be submitting the work permit application. Once you have the job and the LMI, if it's needed based on the offer that you got, but if you get got an LMI exempt job, which is like a caregiver job, then you can just be able to jump that process because you wouldn't need LMI you can now apply for a work permit after you've gotten that particular document as an eligible visitor you can apply online 
through the secure IRCC account. And when it comes to the application, some of the documents that you will need are the job offer letter. Then secondly, the positive LMIA paperwork. That's if it's applicable. Then proof of your current visitor status. That's why I say it's key that you make sure that you still have status in Canada at the time you are submitting your application. Fourthly, you are going to need to complete the forms. That's the IMM5710. And if relevant, the IM5476. Then you also need your passport with at least one blank page. Then you will need a passport size photograph. Then you also need to show your proof of funds. Then sometimes, if necessary, depending on the kind of occupation that you got, you might need to submit a medical exams result. Then lastly, with your application, you will need to submit the application fee, which is 155 for work permits. And if you already have a biometric, then you don't need to pay the $85 that they normally charge for biometrics. But if you haven't, you might need to pay an extra $85 for biometrics after submitting your application what is the next step that you will need to take my advice is always to at least try and acquire an interim work authorization waiting for your work permits can take around 135 days but there is good news you can request for interim work authorization from IRCC if you have a job offer you can start working once you receive that interim work authorization which can take up to 30 working days. So after submitting the application, it is advisable to make sure that you acquire this one so that you can at least start working and don't have to actually wait until you are approved. When it comes to processing time, on the average, the processing time for work permits inside Canada is around 92 days. Keep this in mind as you plan your transition. So like I said, if you are going to be in here for at least six months, you have to know that it's going to take about 92 days to get that work permit approved which means that that's about half of the amount of time that you have to be in canada that means you have about three months that's another 90 days to actually go through that process of finding that job securing that lmia if you need it and submitting your application so that likely your application can be approved without you going out of status during that period to end it I would say converting a visitor visa to work permit in Canada is a very detailed process. But with the right information and preparation, you can successfully navigate it. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might have benefits from this information. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more helpful guides and updates when it comes to immigration policies. If you have any questions or need further assistance, can you drop a comment below or visit the link in the description area for more resources. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Till then, cheers.